So we only have two sub tabs left of the muscle constraint properties vellum node to cover, and they each only have one parameter. So this should be a fairly quick video. The first thing I'm going to say is that this is the one case where I'm breaking my rule of saying that for the first numbered tab, you need to toggle on the um, parameters here. And that is because, well, because there is only one parameter in each tab and I can tell you that the parameter defaults and the attribute defaults match. So there's no need to worry about um, making sure they do match. And when you're in other tabs, because these aren't bold, because they haven't been toggled on. So once you toggle them on, it becomes bold. So if it's toggled off, you can easily see, oh, I haven't changed the collisions or the velocity blend. I don't need to navigate to the tab to see what I've changed. You know, it's just a way of easily seeing, okay, that's just left at default. Don't worry. Um, unfortunately, you can't do that with the other tab with these other sub tabs because of the discrepancy bec between some of the attribute values and parameter values. But in any case, let's actually look at what it does. So the collision radius, um, let me actually turn it to one so that it's a bit easier to explain what value it represents when it's at one, because this isn't, um, the units of this aren't meters, right? It's not, this is definitely not a meter radius circle, I mean sphere. So basically when it is one, you can see for the, on this mass muscle, for instance, the spheres are quite neatly packed together. So how it is calculated. So it's also different for each muscle, right? So it's the same for each point on a single muscle, but it varies from muscle to muscle. The way it's calculated is the average edge length is calculated per muscle. And the, this collision scale is equal to half the average edge length. Well, the scaling fact, so it's scale, that's what it's scaling it by. So when it's one, it's half the average edge length. So if you have a situation where the edge length of in the single muscle, if all the edge lengths are equal and therefore equal to the average edge length, the spheres should have their radii all touching each other perfectly. But then obviously in the case where you have varying edge lengths, you won't have it um, as tightly packed together, or you'll have some areas where it's so tightly packed together that it's overlapping in other areas where there are gaps. But that's basically the, um, the scale fact that's happening here. So when it's one, it is equal to half the average edge length, but the default value is, oops, I didn't mean to key it. I wanted to um, set it to default is a quarter of that. So an eighth of the average edge length. And this is a pretty good value um, in most situations I found. Um, you can tweak it if you need to. Um, I would guess more likely to tweak it to a lower value than a higher value, but it is, I think, pretty self-explanatory. I will also mention that you can actually visualize the collision radius if you toggle this on. I've already done it, but if you toggle the collisions on in the guides tab, and turn on the collision radius, you can see the same feature, but it also has an extra other feature. If you turn on disabled collisions, what it shows are all the places where there are points inside um, other surfaces, right? Because it's disabling that on the first frame already so that it doesn't explode in the simulation. So, um, that's worth knowing. But if you change your collision radius, this won't change it because it's not based on the radius. It's just based on whether a point is absolutely within a surface or not. Um, so that's just something worth knowing. Let's go back to the constraint properties. So that's the collision radius. Then for the velocity blend, the first thing that's very important to note is that when I turn it on here and set it to a non-zero value, by default, this will not have any effect because we also need to go to the solver and go to the simulation tab and check on enable velocity blending. Okay, very important. It's not on by default, so you have to turn it on yourself if you want to, it to have any effect. And the reason it's off by default is because it actually adds to the sim time. Um, so if you're not using it, it's cheaper just to have it off, which also means 
that this wouldn't necessarily be your first point of, you probably would try other things first before resorting to this. But in any case, the reasoning behind the velocity blend is that it's going to transfer the velocity from the bones to the muscles via the muscle to bone constraints. And the reasoning for that is that it helps if you have very fast moving bones and you find that the muscles aren't keeping up with the bones. So that when it's at one, it's going to transfer all of the velocity from the bones to the muscles. When it's at zero, it's going to transfer none of the velocity and a value in between is obviously a percentage of the velocity. Now, the downside of this is that it's going to reduce your secondary motion, right? Because when, if the muscles are inheriting all the velocity from the bones directly, I mean, when the bones come to a sudden stop, the muscles will come to a sudden stop. It won't um, have that nice sort of jiggle and overshoot that you might expect. So just be aware of that if you're using this. And I have also heard that it doesn't always work as expected. So like I said before, this wouldn't be a first resort. It would be more of a last resort. If you find that your muscles aren't following your bones, I would suggest to try some other options first, namely either decreasing or possibly both decreasing the damping on your muscle to bones. If the area where you're finding that it's not following the bones is in the belly of the muscle. And if it's happening more at the ends of the muscle, then you can decrease the damping in the muscle ends. If you find that it's happening in the tendon region, you can also go to your muscle properties tab and increase your tendon mass density. Your other option is to increase your velocity stiffness factor on your muscle to bone constraints. And another thing that will always help, but will also add to the sim time is increasing your substeps on the muscle solver. Okay, so only if you've tried all of those and you're still not getting good results would I recommend resorting to the velocity blend. Okay, in the next video, we will look at the muscle paint node.